This is a land deed for the Wilcox School. We've had it transcribed. Can you read what it says? Ike Dumas and Francis Dumas, his wife, mm -hmm. who were my great-grandparents. Your great-grandparents. For the consideration of the sum of one dollar, provide land to the Board of Missions of the Freedmen of the United Presbyterian Church of North America. Yeah, what that means is that your great-grandfather, Isaac Dumas Sr., is one of the men who donated 10 acres of land to create the school. He believed that black children deserved the same educational opportunities as white children, so he sold his land for $1 to the Presbyterian Church to create a school for freedmen, for the children of slaves. Giving back to our community, I like it. Mm. I like giving back. Um, I didn't know where that, where that heart came from. Came from. I'm fired up now. The mission schools in Wilcox County fell into disrepair. Eventually, their role diminished within the segregated African-American community. For well over a century, segregation and its effects would circumscribe our lives and confine our possibilities, how and where we lived, where we could work, even what we could dream, and how much of the outside world we could ever truly know. Segregation shaped me and education liberated me. It not only liberates the reader, but it, liber it liberates that person who has been imprisoned in the reader's prejudices. Poet, novelist, inspiration. Maya Angelou, in 1970, turned her remarkable family story into art through her classic autobiography, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. At what age did you become curious about your family tree? I became curious almost in self-defense. Uh, my mother and father uh, separated and divorced and sent us away to my father's mother. I knew I knew nothing uh -huh. except Grandmother Henderson. Uh -huh. My grandmother, I knew until I was about seven that she was God. Uh -huh. She wouldn't tell anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> the child of former slaves, Mama Henderson, as Maya called her larger-than-life paternal grandmother, ran a general store in Stamps, Arkansas. Maya moved in with her in the 1930s. But even in the warmth and safety of her grandmother's home, Maya felt vulnerable as if her world could turn upside down at a moment's notice. There were some girls who lived on land my grandmother owned, and they were white. And they would, if they came into the store when my uncle was there, he had to give them anything they wanted <laughs> because he was a black man. And although he was crippled and that, if, he, if they didn't, he could simply say, he, they, he made a pass at them, yes, yeah. and that would be the end of it. So they could blackmail him implicitly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But once they came, these girls, one stood up on her hands to show. She, she said, look at here, Annie. And she stood up. And she had no drawers on, mm. no panties. Mm -hmm. And it was so insulting. Mm. And I just cried. I wanted my grandmother to show that she was God and zap them. Uh -huh. I sat behind the kitchen screen door and when Mama came in, she said, don't, sister, sister, don't worry about that. Don't worry. It won't always be that way. I couldn't imagine a time when it would be different. Uh -huh. Maya once wrote that in Stamps, Arkansas, segregation was so complete that most black children didn't really, absolutely, know what white kids looked like. She recalled never believing that whites were really real. 
For so many of our ancestors, the chasm between white and black was too wide a divide to cross. And then your grandparents ever talk about race relations in the South as opposed to the North, or white people in the South as never, opposed to... You know, you know, old black people talking about race relations and just talking about how much they hate white people. That's pretty much... <laughs> <laughs> These damn crackers, damn cracker, this cracker, ah, this damn cracker's killing me. <laughs> the segregation Chris Rock's grandparents experienced in South Carolina in the 1940s may have seemed like ancient history to Chris, growing up in Brooklyn in the 1970s. Still, he was not immune from the sting of racism, even in the North. 